Hello everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. Today we'll be taking a closer look at the GeForce GTX Titan Black, NVIDIA's newest and most powerful gaming and workstation GPU. We'll take a look at some features and some specs, and I've also run some benchmarks in single card and two-way SLI configurations using reference design cards from EVGA and from ASUS. For starters, this card, like the GTX Titan, the GTX 780, and the GTX 780 Ti, is based on NVIDIA's GK110 GPU, the big daddy of the Kepler-based chips from the GTX 600 series and 700 series. It's an interesting market segment that the Titan Black falls into, being less expensive than dedicated workstation GPUs from NVIDIA's Quadro or Tesla series, but decidedly more expensive than typical gaming GPUs, even taking the enthusiast segment into account. NVIDIA would probably tell you that the Titans are more suited towards workstation and GPU compute applications, but they also offer best-in-class gaming performance for folks who want to push every pixel they can with 4K gaming and next-gen titles. There are two things that place the Titan and Titan Black in a league of their own. First, the memory buffer, which at 6GB offers video RAM to spare, particularly helpful for high-resolution 4K or multi-monitor gaming, as well as memory-intensive GPU compute applications on the workstation side. The Titan Black also increases the memory frequency to 7,000 MHz effective speed, providing 336GB per second of bandwidth compared to the Titan's 288.4. Secondly, the Titan Black's GK110 GPU features a full complement of 2,880 CUDA cores and 1.3 teraflops of double precision GPU compute performance. While double precision compute performance is not very important in the fast-paced world of 3D game rendering, it's essential for workstation applications when precision is more important than speed. The Titan Black also manages to beat out the GTX 780 Ti in gaming thanks to increased clock speeds compared to the original Titan. The Titan Black's GPU has a base clock of 889 MHz, a boost clock of 980, and actual clock speeds were hitting 1084 with a single card and 1058 when they were in two-way SLI. Specs also include 5.1 teraflops of single precision compute performance, 6 GB of 7000 MHz GDDR5 memory on a 384-bit interface, and a 250-watt TDP. Physically, the reference design card is practically identical to the other GK110 GPUs from NVIDIA, with an aluminum cover, LED backlit GeForce GTX logo, and a clear polycarbonate window which shows the thin array just beneath. The black shares some of the aesthetic finishing touches with the 780 Ti, such as the black powder coated finish on the cooling fins and the black printing on the Titan logo. You'll want a 600 watt power supply at minimum to power a single Titan Black, along with your whole computer of course preferably with 6-pin and 8-pin PCI Express graphics power connectors available. The primary connection to your system is still PCI Express Gen 3 X16, and for video outs, you have a couple dual-link DVI ports that can push up to 2560 by 1600 at 60 hertz, one of which is DVI-I, so you can use an analog adapter. Also, you get an HDMI 1.4 out that can send a 4K signal at 24 or 30 hertz, and DisplayPort 1.2 that can do up to 4K at 60 hertz. The Titan Black continues support for NVIDIA's newest technologies, including G-Sync via the DisplayPort output, which synchronizes a variable refresh rate between the card and a G-Sync compatible monitor for smooth gameplay and maximum frame rates, Shadow Play, which is always on game recording with low system overhead, and NVIDIA Shield compatibility, which allows you to stream your desktop PC games to your NVIDIA Shield handheld device so you can play anywhere in your home or stream from your PC to your home theater with Shield in console mode. Of course, there's also continued support for existing NVIDIA technologies such as GPU Boost 2.0, TXAA, FXAA, Physics, Adaptive VSync, NVIDIA CUDA technology, and NVIDIA Surround and 3D Vision. Next up, we'll take a look at some benchmarks. For comparison, we have a stock NVIDIA GeForce GTX Titan, which is somehow representing the low end of this spectrum, and the GTX 780 Ti running as a single card as well as in two-way SLI. Our testbed is based on an Intel Core i7-4960X clocked to 4.5 GHz, cooled by a Cooler Master Sidon 120XL closed-loop CPU cooler. Motherboard is an ASUS Rampage 4 formula with 16 GB of G-Skill Trident X DDR3 memory running at 2400 MHz. A SanDisk Ultra Plus 256 GB SSD contains our Windows 7 64-bit operating system and an array of games and benchmarks. The system is housed in an open in-win D-frame chassis powered by Rosewell Hercules 1600-watt power supply. At long last, here are your benchmarks.
And that is all for the benchmarks. And as you can see, the Titan Black faces some tough competition from its GK110 based siblings, but ultimately comes out on top. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Links to these cards are available in the video description. Don't forget to comment, like, and share, and we'll see you all next time.